General. Positive identification of the traitor's cruiser. Linking to your tactical display. Follow my intercept course. Take us around the fiercest fighting and deliver us near his flank. The target shows no sign of evasion. General, forward weapons locked and ready. Fire! Your shield is down. Forward disruptors. Recharged and locked. Roll fire. Lower shields. General, they are beaten. I request the honor of delivering the final death stroke. Maintain your position aft of their rear shield array until you hear from me directly. Now bring an end to this charade. Chief Engineer, transport me to the traitor's bridge. I care nothing for the damage to the engines. I want change. Take them off and bring us back, or your head will adorn my... Kalnor, son of Geoch. I challenge you under the ancient rites of blood peace. Your officers will bear witness. Chang, this is not one of your lectures at the Academy. This is a warship of the House of Jihok. Your life became my property the moment you beamed aboard. There will be no duel. Our ancestors settled their differences in this fashion. The right of blood peace may have fallen out of favor in this decadent age. But it is no less binding today. Or will you flaunt your cowardice in the very presence of your men? You are a fool, Chang. Chancellor Lorak will fall. His illness weakens him by the hour. Already he is unfit to lead the High Council. Withdraw this challenge. Join me, and I will ensure a proper place for you within my new government. You cannot avoid my challenge, Kalnor. If it is Lorak's fate to be deposed, so be it. I will ensure his successor will be a man of honor, not a cowardly son of Geoch. <laughs> <laughs> words of Shakespeare now, Chang! Had you accepted my offer, you would have lived to fight your true enemy. Now you're just a glob fly on the road to my ascension. but a walking shadow. It's a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing.
Welcome, cadets. I am Commandant Aix Rothro, and I am very proud to welcome you to Starfleet Academy Command School. Ever since uh, Starfleet Academy was founded, the United Federation of Planets has sought the best and the brightest from over a thousand worlds. Make it, Captain. Two years ago, we put out the call once again and challenged you to boldly go where no man has gone before. Procedure is getting longer and longer well. every time. Now I'm sure you've all heard a lot about the Starfleet Academy simulator. Now those who excel will become the uh, Starship captains and command crews of tomorrow. But first, you must learn the grave responsibilities of command. It is now my distinct honor to introduce the new Chief of Command School. I'm Captain Hikaru Sulu. I'll be with you the next two years before I take command of the USS Excelsior. It's my job to create the Starfleet captains of the future. I will test you on your ability to manage your crew. Remember, you will no longer be judged solely by your own conduct, but also by the conduct of those you command. And now, my close friend and our distinguished guest, Captain James T. Kirk. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Command College. You've just embarked on the most challenging course that the Academy has to offer, and also the most rewarding it is often said that command school cadets are the best of the best, and it's also said that uh, I commanded the best, the best ship, the best crew. Truth is, there's no such thing as the best. One ship may be brand new, state of the art, but it also has countless bugs to work out. Another ship may be 100 years old and uh, shake like a rattle, but the bugs are long gone, and that's why she's 100 years old. Same goes for your crew. They may be technical wizards, but if they can't work as a team, their skills are useless to you. When you meet your crew, you'll find a thousand abilities and talents and flaws all crackling against each other. And that's where you come in. Those of you who succeed in building a team will be among the elite few to take us to the stars. Good luck, fair weather, and never forget that risk is your business. So many years of training, study, and instruction. Now I, Torlek, son of Rokva, have earned a place in this hall. 
The honor to my family name alone was worth the struggle. But what will the general think? Will he recognize that I possess the strength to lead my fellow warriors into battle? Will he? He's here. I officially welcome you to the Klingon Defense Forces Elite Command Academy. You have surpassed your peers to earn a place within this distinguished hall. But I tell you, this is not enough. In the days to come, you will be tested well beyond your current limitations. Most of you will fail, and failure will mean your immediate dismissal from this institution. Past achievements mean nothing here. I am not interested in the names of your fathers, nor of your family's lineage. What I am interested in is your breaking point. How will you conduct yourselves in battle? How far will you go to preserve your honor and fulfill your duty? These are simple questions that will decide the fate of our empire. One day there will be a war with our true enemy, the Federation. There are those who disagree, but it will happen. Before that day arrives, your role within this great conflict must be determined. This academy was conceived to create the very finest warship commanders in the galaxy. Those few of you who succeed will be granted immediate command of a warship. For those who do not, there will be no disgrace. Whatever becomes of you, either at this academy or beyond, never forget, you are all Klingon warriors. Klingon warriors. I have placed a challenge before you. Let us conclude this address and begin the trial. Cadet's log, first entry. Cadet David Forrester logging on. Today they took us for a tour of the simulator, and for the first time, I met my crew. That's Jeffrey Corrin, my navigator. He's from one of the wealthiest families on Alpha Centauri. Rumor has it he was up for command school, but didn't take it because he doesn't like the responsibility of command. Of course, rumor also has it that his photon torpedoes never miss. At the helm is Jana Acton. She's from the mining colony on Rigel 12 in the Levantine Expanse. She hasn't had an easy life. They live pretty rough out there, especially by Federation standards. My engineer is Robin Brady, from Colorado, on Earth. He's a quiet guy, but I'm told he can tear apart and rebuild a warp drive in record time. Over by communications, that's Vanda McGee. She's the oldest daughter of a prominent Andorian ambassador. Most Andorians never expected her to take on a heavy responsibility like Starfleet. My science officer is Sturek, from Vulcan. I worked with him in some computer classes last year. He's brilliant, even by Vulcan standards. Cadets! We're scheduled to complete familiarization later this morning, and this afternoon we fly our first real simulator mission, our trial by fire. Let's hope we're ready for it. Once you are out of direct communication with Starfleet, you'll face challenges we cannot anticipate. Your ship, and maybe even the entire Federation, will have to live with the consequences of your decisions. Now, despite the events presented in the first two simulations, we are not just testing your combat ability. You must be able to make well-informed decisions. Good afternoon, crew. Hey, hello, dude. 
I asked y'all to meet me here so we could get acquainted. Did everyone get a drink? Yep. <laughs> yes. Any chance of something stronger? <laughs> Not on my salary. So, uh, you, you want to sit down? So, um, what did you think of Rothro's speech today? Well, I didn't agree with Rothro. I mean, you can't invent a rule for every situation. Perhaps not, but statistically speaking, the current Starfleet regulations have brought the Federation unprecedented success. I don't think we have a choice here. If we don't follow the established procedures, we simply invite chaos. Starfleet's not perfect, Janna, and neither are the regs. Perhaps not, but I didn't apply to Starfleet because I thought I knew better than the best minds in the Federation. Well, maybe you didn't, but I know I have something to offer to Starfleet. Uh, uh why did you get into Starfleet, Corn? I bought my way in. Hey, don't look so surprised. There's a two-for-one sale on Shuttlecraft today. <laughs> look, Corn, this may be a joke to you, but it is a privilege to be here at Starfleet. I worked hard to get here. So, Jenna, how did you get here anyway? Stealing the local shuttle or just hitching a ride on your garbage haul? Both of you, stop! She can't take a joke. Both of you are out of line. I'm really sorry. Look, maybe that's enough getting acquainted for today. In the interest of completeness, I suggest we hear from Robin. Oh, right. Uh, Robin, uh, what about you? Uh, I wasn't even sure I wanted to join Starfleet. I was happy working on the weather control satellite monitoring systems. Starfleet's a lot more socially complex. <laughs> socially complex? <laughs> Corn. Sorry. I just want to be able to serve, that's all. I concur. When one has the capabilities that are of use to the many, service is the only logical response. I agree, absolutely. And we'll all get that chance. To the crew. To the crew. Here, here. What a fine collection of warriors. So eager for battle. You prepared to destroy your enemy? Really? Today, you will fire the first shots in a campaign that will lead to the destruction of the Federation. This campaign is not real, but I assure you, it will be worse than real. If you can defeat them in my simulated trials, you will be able to defeat them anywhere, at any time. I believe you know when an enemy intends you harm, but are you truly prepared? Have you meticulously observed your enemy? Have you? discerned his weaknesses, appraised his strengths, discovered his greatest hopes and fears. To know your enemy is to defeat him before you have faced him. Do not wait until you meet in the coldness of space, for space is the harshest instructor. In any future conflict, the Federation expects a coordinated assault by the Klingon and Romulan empires. They expect us to seize territory along the border then entrench ourselves for a protracted conflict. Therefore, we will do no such thing. We will begin by creating a breach in the infamous neutral zone. Your task, as part of the Gorcha Group 1, will be to pave the way for our heavy strike forces. Over the years, Starfleet has installed powerful sensor probe nets along their side of the neutral zone to monitor our movements while a cloaked vessel is extremely difficult to detect under normal conditions. It can be traced at short range by a sufficiently powerful probe net. We must destroy their probe nets without alerting Starfleet before our strike groups can cross the neutral zone. Jamming cruisers will be positioned along the probe net in the Targa sector. Once these are in place and all communications jammed, you will destroy the sensor probes and their monitoring stations. Now, make your approach. Under cloak. The element of surprise 
must be maintained. Good hunting. Come in. Hi, Jenna. Have a seat. So, what's up? It's about Corrin. He's out of control. If I didn't know better, I'd say you didn't like Corrin. This has nothing to do with my personal opinion of Corrin. But I think he's hurting the team's morale. Look, I understand your concerns, but we're all still new at this. For now, Corrin stays. Look, it's not that I mind Corrin going out with that cadet. It's just that he wasn't even interested in her until he found out Robin had a crush on her. Hold on, what cadet? I'm talking about Faith Gage. Haven't you heard about her? <laughs> no, I, I've been too busy with my studies. Look, I'll check into it, okay? I'll be in the simulator. Cadet's log, supplemental. Apparently, I'm expected to monitor the love life of my crew, as well as lead them. You have all known since childhood the symbol of our empire. It has been called many names throughout the ages. Perhaps the least understood is the heart of virtue, or tik gok in the ancient tongue. The heart of virtue originated from an archaic weapon favored by Kalos, the unforgettable. It is said he chose this as the symbol of his house and later the empire because of the weapon's unequaled balance. Yet this is inaccurate. Kalos chose it because each of the three blades represents those virtues that are the very foundation of every true warrior. Honor, loyalty and duty, each in perfect balance. Of these three, duty is the first virtue. It is the beginning and the end of the warrior's path. Without duty, a warrior becomes the slave of vain glory and reckless self-interest. No true warrior could ever tolerate these vices, neither in his comrades nor in himself. Cadet's log. I was looking for Captain Sulu to hand in my weekly reports and possibly get some advice on the Corn and Robin situation. He thought it was a miracle, but I said it couldn't have been God. He was commanding the Enterprise <laughs> at the time. <laughs> sir! My report, sir. At ease, Cadet. Commander Chekhov, meet David Forrester. He just might be what you're looking for. Ah! Nice to meet you, Cadet. And you, sir. I didn't know you were teaching at the Academy. He's not really an instructor. I'm here to develop some new simulator missions. I've had a few unorthodox ideas. By the way, Cadet Forrester, do you know your way around the simulated neural feedback bipolar resolution assimilator? <laughs> well, well, I was in the top 10% of my computer class, sir. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Cadet, do you know what a Cossack is? Um, well, I, I think they were horsemen. Uh, on the Eurasian continent of Earth in the 18th to 19th centuries, sir. That's good. Very good. Excellent. You might be exactly what I need. Commander Chekhov needs some help with his simulation testing. It should be a simple task for such a well-informed student as yourself. Report tomorrow to the science lab. Commander Chekhov, sir. I, uh, think I found the problem right here. Ah, yes. Well, it's not really the problem. It looks like it's log supplemental. Well, I solved a tricky recursion problem in the Romulan cloaking simulation, and my fate was sealed. Commander Chekhov asked me to assist him on a regular basis. I do have to admit, though, it's pretty amazing to see the simulations from the inside, as well as from the command chair. Can you believe Rothro's speech today? He really pushed the follow the regs, be a good little soldier idea. You're right, Frank. It's easy to pay lip service to the regs, but when you're out there, the best captains have to play by their own rules. Look at Kirk. He broke the regs all the time, and look where that got him. Yeah, he was brought up on court-martial charges. And, and he came out of it just fine. But because of the court-martial, he was demoted from admiral to captain. I do not believe within human culture that is considered to be just fine. 
David, when you're a captain, won't you want some flexibility? No. I think everything I'll have to deal with is probably covered in Starfleet regs. Look, David, regulations like the Prime Directive are fine for the idealists in the Federation. But if Starfleet faces an overwhelming threat, then we need to do whatever is necessary. Megia is absolutely right. The Federation expends too much of our resources coddling all these uncivilized races. <sighs> the Federation is not hurting for resources. Forrester, these other races don't value the same things we do. They don't deserve the slack the Federation gives them. Which other races would these be, Frank? The Klingons? The Romulans? Those races are aggressive and vicious. And here we are, still trying to keep the peace with them. I agree with Milan. If it had not been for the Organian Peace Treaty, we would have seen the complete destruction of the Klingon Empire. Why are you taking this so personally, Magia? I don't want to talk about it, David. Come on, Magia. We're all on the same side here. You can tell us. Yeah. Well, when I was a child, I had friends who were in the massacre on Lurson Prime. Oh. I understand. But that was before the Organian Peace Treaty. Uh, Klingons, Organians. I'm really not up for this kind of debate. I'll see you guys later. Right. I concur. Bye, David. Uh, Jeff. You got a minute? What's up? Look, we need to talk about your performance. Look, I know my evaluations aren't the best, but, but there's so much to do here, and it's hard to find time to study. Jeff, there is nothing more important than your studies. Okay, fine, Forrester. I'll try harder. Don't you think you should study now? I think I should be going now. I've got friends waiting for me. Cadet's log, supplemental. Well, there sure is a lot more about this job I still need to learn. So this is the answer. Polish the blade of duty. Sharpen its edge till there is nothing it cannot pierce. Do not be lulled into believing this is enough. The longest blade of the heart of virtue belongs to honor. It is the most difficult to master. It has been said, mine honor is my life, in that I live, and for that I will die. What is honor? Honor is the absolute and unselfish adherence to all virtues, to truth, to courage, to forthrightness. It encompasses all these, and yet it is greater. It is the fire illuminating the differences between an armed savage and a true warrior. It is the light that will guide you along the warrior's path. Cadet's log. Last week was a really hard one, but I feel my crew's performance is beginning to improve. Corn. Corn. Hi, David. What's up? Weren't you supposed to be studying the Nav Sims tonight? I studied a couple hours and I needed to take a break. Your scores in the simulator haven't improved that much. We've been through this. And we'll keep going through it until you deliver what you're capable of. Okay, what do you want me to do? I want you to study Nav protocols for three hours before our next mission. Corn, what's wrong? Look, it's like this. If I don't try hard, it doesn't matter if I fail. But if I study hard and I still don't make it... What about the rest of us? You know, we're doing our best, and we're getting nothing from you. Look, David, I can't guarantee anything, but I'll try. Good. Cadet's log, supplemental. Not my best moment as a commanding officer. Look around this great hall. What do you see? 
Many of your peers are gone, yet you remain. That is as it should be. The weak must fall to give place to the strong. But do not allow yourselves to grow callous. Security is mortal's chiefest enemy. All true warriors travel the same river of blood. If one is disgraced, we are all disgraced. If one finds his death in glory, we all share in that glory. No true warrior would allow another to suffer an unjust disgrace, nor would begrudge him the fruits of a well-earned victory. Know this, and your mastery of the heart of virtue will be all but complete. Ignore it, and you will ultimately fail yourselves as you fail your comrades. That is why the final blade of the heart of virtue signifies loyalty, because we are all united by our common journey. I commend you on your performance thus far. Cadet's log. Despite my best efforts, Robin continues to isolate himself and it's really hurting his performance. Corrin's grades are still low and this morning I was called into Rothro's office. Enter. Cadet, I understand you have a busy and full schedule, but that does not account for your performance in the simulator. I expect much better from you and your crew. Yes, sir. Have you seen Korn's ratings for this simulation? No, sir. Korn's ratings have improved dramatically. But there's still an issue with Cadet Brady's performance. I'll talk to Robin about it, sir. Good. Robin is technically proficient, but has trouble meshing with the team. Additional study won't improve his scores. He needs to feel comfortable as a member of your team. Sir, what happens if Robin's scores don't improve? The only way Cadet Brady's scores won't improve is if he can't handle the simulator. His class works fine. It's your job to make sure he does well in the simulator. Sir, how do I replace a member of my crew? You don't. You deal with the hand you've been dealt. Is that understood, Cadet? Yes, sir. But, sir, what if there's a personality conflict? Personality conflicts? You're going to complain about personality conflicts when a Klingon heavy cruiser is barreling down on you? Hmm? Handle your problems, cadet. Understood? Yes, sir. Dismissed. McGee, what are you doing here? David, I am Dismissed, not going to... Dismissed, cadet! Yes, sir! Cadet's log, supplemental. I'm worried about McGee, but until I get a chance to talk to her... There's really nothing I can do. Hello, David. Faith Gage. Oh, yes, Faith. How are you doing? Good. Uh, do you mind if I sit? No, go ahead. Thank you. I'm glad I have a chance to talk to you. You know, Corin talks a lot about you. No, well, I'm glad you came by. I, I wanted to talk to you, actually. About one of my crew, Robin Brady. Yeah. Are you two... No. No. Uh, <laughs> I have him in a few of my classes, but um, other than engineering, he doesn't seem to have many other interests. Well, he's pulled his head out of a Jeffrey's tube long enough to develop a crush on you. <laughs> yeah. He's a nice kid, but um, I couldn't possibly be interested in someone whose whole life is dilithium matrices. Yeah, I know. I, um, I've been trying to get him out more. Yeah. Do you have any suggestions? Well, yeah, why doesn't he join one of the groups on campus? David, have you been watching the news? No, what? Brother has been repeating the announcement We've every five minutes. We've been given official confirmation that the Federation colony on Bicea was destroyed two days ago by unknown forces. There are no survivors. McGee had relatives on Bicea, didn't she? Your mom lived on that planet. Mm. They better give her some leave time. Well, Bicea was one of the disputed worlds, wasn't it? Right along the Klingon neutral zone? Correct. Mm -hmm. Before the Organian Peace Treaty, both the Federation and the Klingon Empire had a claim to Bicea. Yeah, McGee, you must feel so awful. Sorry. McGee, I'm sorry. Thank you, David. All of you for your concern. We can put our missions on hold during your leave of absence. That won't be necessary. As your captain, I could order you to take some time off. You would be exceeding your authority. McGee, yeah. I am going to study now. Uh, wait a minute. Fascinating. Cadet's log, supplemental. 
Now what am I going to do? Which brings me to the subject of the field of death. It is the place where battle is waged. It may be a high mountain crag or the rim of a black hole. What is important is that you master this place as surely as you do your enemy. If swift attack is called for, what terrain hastens you and hinders your enemy? If you stand outnumbered, where can you position yourself to exact the highest cost from your opponent? The warrior who turns his immediate environment to his advantage has mastered the field of death. He becomes unassailable while rendering his opponent powerless. This is why the Codex of Voxum states that for the master warrior, the ground will gobble up his enemies and the air will strangle his foes. Now I ask you, where is the enemy? Are you lords of the field? If not, why cease you till you are so? Cadet's Log Despite her recent loss, Magia came through just fine in the last sim. So I guess Starfleet knows best. Although I'm still very worried about her. On the other hand, Robin's scores continue to drop. Enter. Robin, come on in, have a seat. David, you want to talk to me? Robin, I want to talk to you about the team. I thought everything was going okay. Oh, it is, it is. But I want you to spend more time with the team. Outside the simulator. <laughs> Do I have to? Robin, we just... We want your company. At least come to our poker games. I never know what to say to the others. How am I supposed to get anything done if I'm socializing? What? Am I supposed to stay out all night like Corrin does? You gotta find a balance. Just like Corrin. I don't... I don't like socializing. I like... Transporter matrices. Matter to energy conversions. The new replicator theories. Robin, the best place for you to learn all about that is here. I'm not sure I'll ever fit in. <sighs> Look, if you leave the academy, you'll never know how, how good you could have been, how far you could have gone. That's not fair. This is easy for you. You fit in. Everybody likes you. Everybody really likes you. You must have noticed by now that I don't fit in. Robin, Robin, sit down, okay? It's really hard on me. That's why you need to socialize more. Look, the only way to fit in is to go into that lounge and face them. I'll try, David. I'll try and socialize more. Great. And then maybe we can talk about some of those replicator theories you're working on, huh? I'd like that. Okay. Look, I'll, I'll see you in the lounge, okay? Thanks, David. Cadet's log supplemental. You know, just when you think you're handling a problem, another appears. This time it was by Sia again. The Klingon Empire! had nothing to do with the loss of the Vicea colony. However, there is bitter justice in the colony's failure. The Federation should never have put fragile Andorians and humans on such a hostile world. Only Klingons could have tamed Vicea. Liar! What about the energy readings on Vicea? Didn't they show Klingon disruptors destroyed the colony? The trace energy on Bicea was similar to the patterns made by Klingon disruptors. But that does not conclusively prove Klingon involvement. Oh, so was all those other races on the Klingon border that used disruptors. Why are you defending the Klingons, Sturek? Though I regret your personal loss, I must point out that Bicea was not a particularly important colony. Nor was it strategically placed. It is illogical to assume that the Klingons would start a war in a world that would gain them so little. Well, isn't that just like a Vulcan? Using logic to deny the obvious. Face it, Milan. You've lost this argument. We need to change the Federation's whole approach toward the Klingons. How? By going to war? Look, the attack on Bicea was an act of war. We cannot let it go unpunished. If you ask me, the Vanguard is the right answer. The Vanguard? What's that? It is a group that is as tired as you are of the Federation's response to outside threats. The Vanguard says it's time for humans to take care of humans. I see. 
And what about all the other races that are a part of the Federation? That's just what I'm talking about. Well, it sounds like the Vanguard's real target is the Federation. We don't have a problem with the Federation, just some of its policies. We want to help the Federation get stronger. What policies would you be referring to? I don't have time for this. I got a Xeno Psych class. See you later, Milan. Sounds fascinating. Sounds frightening. They might be possibly just what the Federation needs. Well, look, I don't know what the Federation needs, but I need a drink. <laughs> here, here. Cadet's log. I asked Captain Sulu about Milan's vanguard speeches today. He said that Starfleet follows the policy of IDIC, infinite diversity in infinite combinations. This means we have to respect Milan's beliefs even if we disagree with them. I've got to admit, it's hard to respect a belief that doesn't respect the rights of others. But I'll try to do my best for the command staff and for Starfleet. finally struck back. The Klingons have gone too far this time. Those marauding... What's going on? The USS Sentinel just fought a couple birds of prey in the neutral zone. The engagement ended inconclusively, with no ships destroyed and no loss of life. He wants to start a fight. The captain of the Sentinel showed the Federation how a true Starfleet captain acts. Yeah. Hey, Milan. Since when are you the authority on captains, cadet? What's the matter, Forster? Are you afraid that you actually might have to fight someday? Are you afraid your facts won't support your story? Leave him be, David. I can't believe you're supporting him. He's making sense. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. You're the one who... <clears throat> I liked the other David Forrester better. What are you gonna do? Trouble with the crew, Forrester? Listen, you handle your crew. I'll handle mine. Come on. We need a captain like Kirk to avenge Bicea. I ask you now, what three things make the Federation a powerful adversary? General, it is their vast natural resources, their economic capacity, and the skills of their science. Good. Why? Ah. The answer lies in their political acumen. They have successfully knitted together countless worlds of diverse races, plundered their resources, assimilated their technologies, and absorbed their wealth. This is their strength, and it is also their greatest weakness. Their size is difficult to defend. Their resources are scattered by time and space. The political system is unwieldy. These races were brought into Federation not naturally through conquest, but through diplomacy. This last is the key, for it renders the Federation a brittle unity, a unity we will shatter in the days of now. It is war's prize to take all advantages. The Federation Council President formally apologized to the Klingon High Council over the aggressive actions by the USS Sentinel. What? The Klingons concede that, that the discharge of weapons was based on a misunderstanding. Oh, I don't believe it. They sold us out. Face it, Milan, you're wrong. But the Federation apologized to butchers. Sit down. I'm not gonna sit down. It's the Federation's future that's at stake here. I can't watch this. He is way out of line. Lofty words for someone who refuses to get involved. I'm worried about her. Me too. And Dorian's are different, David. Their ways with dealing with grief have nothing to do with being calm. This Ice Queen act is bizarre. Yeah, it's unnerving to see her so controlled. David, it's affecting the team's performance. How do I get her scores back up? I don't know. It looked like she did much better in the last mission. What happened before that? I don't know. Thanks, Jeff. I'll, th I'll think about it. Sure. I'm 
still getting some distortion. Try the next processor. Yes, Commander. Good morning, Commander. Greetings, Captain. Still trying to get that thing to work. Ah. Watch the specs on the new Klingon heavy cruiser. Why don't you plug it in, see how she flies. Right away, sir. Cadet! Captain, this is Cadet David <clears throat> Forrester. Glad to meet you, Cadet. It's an, it's an honor, sir. About last night... Kid looks nervous. Goodbye, sir. David. Is there a problem? Well, it's my crew, sir. It's a lot harder to manage them than it looked on paper. Sometimes Starfleet gives the most challenging cadets to the most capable command school students. Bringing out the best in them brings out the best in you. It's an old Russian technique. David, what is the problem? It's my communications officer, sir. She has a personal problem that has her ready to blow up. But she suppresses it. It's bringing down her work in the simulator. Before I joined the Enterprise, I had a commanding officer on Bendiri 4. She had a very hot temper. But she thought getting angry was unprofessional, so she would hold it all in. Whenever she did this, we knew we were in for serious trouble. If you want to help your communications officer, you must encourage her to express her emotions in a more appropriate place, outside of the simulator. How do I do that? That's for you to figure out. But if you've made it to Starfleet Command School, you've probably made somebody angry before. Try to do it again. What? I can't do that. You not only can do that, you must. A captain who pays attention to the temperament and morale of his crew can count on that crew when he really needs them. With respect, sir, it's not much help. A starship captain gets nothing handed to him on a platter, cadet. Nothing is for free. Everything has a price. And that price is knowledge, ingenuity with compassion, and hard work. Think about it. Thank you, sir. Carry on, Mr. Forrester. We've got to get that Klingon ship simulation running by this afternoon. And keep your nose out of the ship performance specs. Yes, sir. Sir, does that mean that... Never mind what it means. Aye, sir. It's just more proof that Federation leaders are weaklings. They're giving away our colonies and allowing the Klingons to massacre our colonists. That theory doesn't hold water, Frank. Klingon colonies along the neutral zone are being attacked, too. Those are just rumors started by the Klingons to cover their tracks. Cadet Milan, assemble your crew and report to the simulator immediately. Let's go. Thank goodness. I can't stand that self-righteous creep. I know. Hi, crew. Hey, David. Hey, David. hey has anyone seen Stark lately? No. Yeah, David. He had a project to work on in the lab. He said he made us in the simulator. Good. So, is everyone ready to take on the Klingons again? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that will be acceptable. That reminds me. Um, I told him I'd meet him in the lab. I'll see you guys later. Right. Uh, Robin, would you help me with those subspace equations? Sure, Jenna. It's pretty simple once you know the overall. Magia, before we go, I think we need to discuss your conduct in the simulator lately. You don't have to be concerned. I am fully in control now. That's what I'm afraid of. What? Look, as long as you hide your feelings, by staying this calm on the outside, you're a threat to the crew. How can you say that? Because it's true. You're bringing us down in the simulator. That's insane! I've done nothing to endanger our standings. Yes, you have. Going into a mission when you're too busy suppressing your rage to do your job is affecting all of our standings in the Academy. Are you trying to start a fight? Face it, McGee, you're screwing up and it's affecting all of us. <laughs> David, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hit you. I really have been bottling things up. I'm sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine. I'll shape up. I swear it. Yeah, I know you will. But uh, in the future, try to blow up a little bit now and again, you know, so uh, I don't have to make a trip to sickbay. And, uh, in the meantime, 
Let's just pretend this little thing didn't happen, okay? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so everything's straightened out now? Oh, I think you're gonna see a big improvement in the team score. Absolutely. You know, I wish I'd have known hitting you would bring up our scores. It'd have saved me a lot of study time. <laughs> <laughs> you two sit down, let me get you a drink. summoned me. Have I failed in some way? Or could this be regarding something else? In summary, your performance demonstrated sound judgment in the heat of battle. I have decided to place you in command of a squadron. Your specific assignment will be provided to you. Thank you, General. I will prove myself worthy of this honor. See that you do. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, regarding Starfleet, you have said that they lack the warrior spirit. I, I trust you, General, but how does this explain James T. Kirk? Ah, yes, Kirk. Indisputably a superb warrior, even honorable, in a limited human sense. It is a little known fact, however, that Kirk is a Klingon. Sir? Our people have traveled the stars far longer than humans. Early in Earth's history, some misfortunate Klingon became stranded there and mated with the local denizens. This chance interbreeding produced James T. Kirk many generations later. This is the only acceptable explanation as to why he is such an outstanding warrior. <laughs> Just aside, Torlek. At one time, humans had a warrior tradition, primitive by our standards, but full of promise. They have since turned from it. He is nothing more than an aberration amongst a people that has betrayed its heritage. They are nothing like you and I. Kirk aside, they're not true warriors. I trust this answers your question? Yes, sir. It does. Very well, then. One more thing, Torek. Commander Thochmak and I see a great potential in you. Dismissed. Cadets, it's my distinct honor to introduce Captain James T. Kirk. Thank you. Out there, out there, whether we like it or not, we have enemies, and you'll be the ones dealing with them. I've heard some cadets say the Klingons are unthinking animals. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not true. Animals don't run star empires. The Klingons may appear brutal, but they also have a deeply rooted code of honor. Study it, understand it. You may prevent the loss of thousands of lives. Let's look at a recent skirmish between the Klingons and the USS Senate. Cadet's log supplemental. The lecture was long but riveting, but it was after the lecture when Captain Kirk took questions that the best part occurred. Yes. You have a question? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a great honor, sir. Yeah. What's your question? Sir, the Klingons have never fully abided by the Organian Peace Treaty. Why don't we put an end to them once and for all? Nice and simple. Well, if you're here, Looking for simple solutions, you're in the wrong place, cadet. And I think we'd take it personally if they felt the same way about us. David, ask him how he gets away with violating the regs. Captain Kirk. Yes, cadet. Sir, do you believe in always following the Starfleet regulations to the letter or reinterpreting them as you see the need to do so? Are there some regs you're thinking of violating, cadet? No, sir. Regulations are for perfect situations. It's up to you to make them fit the imperfect ones. That's why we don't send computers into space. We go with them. We temper them with instinct, 
and improvisation. That's what we do best. The Academy can teach you how to apply the regulations to regular moments, but life in space is made up of thousands of hours of boredom offset by abject moments of terror. When that time hits, it'll be you, not regulations, dealing with it. That's a regulation chair, cadet. Why don't you use it? Answer this. What weapons are available aboard a light cruiser? General, the Cohoes light cruiser has a full complement of disruptor cannons. Along its forward arc... Wrong. I ask you what weapons the vessel has, and you recite its design specifications. Is this an academy for warriors or an engineering college? Aboard a warship, everything is a weapon. Its tractor beams can pummel an enemy with... Debris, its transporters can deliver blows that cripple. Those who master this principle succeed in battle. Those who do not die are glorious, but ultimately useless. Death. Cadet's log. The program Chekhov gave me today is fantastic. I thought the Romulan Tholian Gorn alliance was bad enough, but when he threw in this race called the Anastasian. They, they, they attack on my seat. What? <coughs> I had proof of. I have to. No, no, come on. You won't last 10 seconds in there. It's toxic smoke in there. Come on, I'll have to find another way. Cadet Forrester, your quick action saves Turek from serious injury. Unfortunately, that won't save him from an inquiry. Are you suggesting Stork blew up the lab, sir? Well, we must consider that, Cadet. There are martyrs in every struggle, cadet. On behalf of my crew, I protest, sir. Noted. Sturrock is confined to quarters pending investigation. He'll have permission to work with you on team projects, but that's all. No other contact, sir. I thought I was speaking English. Would you rather hear it in Klingon? No, sir. Any questions? Uh, sir? Do you have any idea who or what might have been behind all this? We can't comment on the specifics of the investigation until the Academy releases its report. But I can say that an explosive device was detonated in the lab. It was no accident. Who would want to bomb the Academy, sir? That's what we intend to find out, Cadet. Oh, consider yourselves dismissed, Cadets. Aye, Aye sir. sir. The latest outrage is this explosion at Starfleet Academy. This mysterious laboratory explosion is the latest in a series of deceptions from Starfleet. It is time we knew the truth. This accident destroyed all the vital evidence linking the Klingons to the savage attacks on our colonies along the neutral zone. But why would Starfleet send vital evidence to Earth in the first place? They say they wanted it examined by the scientists at the Academy. The truth is, that the public can more easily believe a student accidentally blew up the evidence than a civilian scientist at a proper Federation laboratory. But Starfleet made a critical error. The one who was at the lab was a Vulcan student. And we all know that Vulcans are living machines. They are incapable of making mistakes. Why would Starfleet pick a Vulcan to deal with the evidence? Hi, crew. Have you been listening to this? I can't believe they're broadcasting this. He has a right to his opinion. You've got to be kidding. Janice, sometimes you have to sound extreme to make your point, otherwise people don't listen. What? They're saying Sturrock blew up the lab. How is Sturrock? He's fair. How are the rest of you holding up? We're doing just fine. Look, I've got some different news. There's a no-win scenario coming up. It's supposedly impossible to beat. Is that supposed to cheer us up? Well, one cadet did beat it. James T. Kirk. So there is a way to beat it. Well, if he could beat it, so can we. Let's win this one. Okay, David? Any ideas how we actually do it? Well, David, you met Kirk. Maybe you could ask him how he did it. <laughs> Why not? Right. <laughs> All right, knock it off. Look, I better get going. I'll see you later. You have come to understand the meaning of the three virtues and how they may be applied. 
but understanding does not equate to mastery. True mastery can only be achieved with perfect balance. Therein lies the challenge and mystery of the heart of virtue. Any warrior deficient in one aspect is ultimately doomed to fail. Therefore, ask yourselves, is your honor perfect? Are you unerring in your duty? Is your loyalty beyond reproach? Every warrior's life is the empire's, but every warrior's soul is his own. This balance is a quest that may require a lifetime to fulfill. It is not a lesson that can be taught. It is something you must discover for yourselves as you travel the river of blood. This is only part of the shadow politics attempted by alien members of the Federation to keep the natural leaders of the Federation from finding out the truth. Starfleet Academy has stonewalled our request for information. We know the Falcon Cadet was working on evidence from the Bicea incident. Why is it being kept secret? These unanswered questions raise doubts about any story coming from the Federation Council. In further news from the Starfleet Academy explosion, there were no injuries, however damages are That's extensive. Right. Sources inside the Academy report that the unidentified student involved in the blast could be dismissed from the Academy as soon as next week. In other news, rumors of sabotage among the plain Jeff, David! Starfleet's hanging Sturrock out to dry. Even Starfleet's not immune to political pressures. What if they sacrifice Sturrock to make their problems go away? We won't know until it's too late to save him. We have to help him. We're a team. Yes. Let's break into the lab and find out what really happened. David, Kirk said you can violate the rules if your cause is just. He said you have to be willing to pay the price. Are you willing to get kicked out? To save Sturrock from being sacrificed? Yes. Absolutely. In a heartbeat. Look, we don't know if he really is being sacrificed. So we can only use legal means to find out. How? Look, we all have legal access to different parts of the Academy computer, right? Well, if we look carefully, we might find something that's been overlooked. David, you could use your science lab access to legally find out about Sturrock's secret project. Good idea. Thank you. Are you sure? Yes! yes. David. All right, let's do it. Now. Plan this out. First, you. Cadet's log. While I was working with Chekhov on the new Klingon heavy cruiser simulations, I couldn't get the no-win scenario out of my mind. But I also promised my crew that I would try to help Sturrock. I took a chance to look through the non-security database, looking for clues about the lab explosion when I found something I never expected to see. The saboteur had created a back door that let him turn on and off security. It was Robin Brady's access code. Cadet Forrester, please load in the Poznikov series, session 14 through 42. Yes, sir. But, sir, aren't those really old missions? As the wolf said to the songbird while devouring the old peasant, sometimes the oldest things are the tastiest. Sir? An ancient Russian folktale. Haven't you loaded those missions yet? Uh, right away, sir. Uh, I can't, sir. There's a tangle of code in here plugging things up. From where? I don't know. It looks like a heavily encrypted chunk of data spliced right onto the programming codes of a mission. A Commander Chekhov. I have a question for you. What is it? What is this? I think I'd better let the captain explain that. Certainly brings back memories. But, sir, isn't reprogramming the simulator against the rules? I uh, think I'll leave the captain to explain. After I beat the Kobayashi Maru, the administrators talked about tightening the rules, but they never did. <laughs> In fact, I got a commendation for original thinking. Captain Kirk, would you be offended if uh, you were no longer the only cadet to beat the no-win scenario? Well, you still have to find the right solution. But if someone used this to cheat, sir, the Academy won't be able to test how that cadet handles the no-win scenario. 
Get it, Forrester, I hear your science officers in the brig. Has anyone in your crew been pushing you to get them out by breaking the rules? Yes, sir. So, what did you do? I refused, sir. You were faced with two choices. Gratify your crew by leading them in the wrong, but popular, action. Or let them down by making an unpopular but correct decision. Yes, sir. It looks to me like you already did face a no-win scenario. A real-life no-win scenario. And you did the right thing. Thank you, sir. Try to keep quiet about this, okay? And will you please get my Klingon advanced heavy cruiser working? Uh, wait, sir? Yes, Cadet Forrester. Which option did you choose, sir, on the Kobayashi Maru? <laughs> the winning one. Cadet's log supplemental. I had an important decision to make. In the file, Cadet Kirk explained that he had three options. One involved reducing the Klingon artificial intelligence so they would fight dumber. Another was to make the Klingon ships weaker and easier to kill. The third was to program the Klingon captains to fear and respect him personally. The third option was the hardest because it was the easiest one for the instructors to catch him on. I finally decided to program the Klingon captains to fear and respect me personally. I barely had time to finish programming the Klingon advanced heavy cruiser for Captain Kirk before I had to report to the simulator to face the no-win scenario, the deadly Kobayashi Maru. In this scenario, you are to go to Gamma 3 and pick up supplies of food and water to deliver to Meridian 4. Be careful, cadet. Gamma 3 lies close to the Klingon neutral zone. Good luck. Ensign, pay attention to your station. This is Captain Forrester of the USS Ranger. We are here on a rescue mission for the Kobayashi Maru. Captain Forrester? The Captain Forrester? Yes, I am. We remember you well, honored Captain. We would be happy to help you. <laughs> is there a problem, Mr. Corn? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, no, sir. Captain Forrester? That was quite an impressive show out there. I would be impressed except that such a feat is not possible under our current parameters. Interesting. You have passed the Kobayashi Maru. Dismiss, cadets. Enter. Cadet Forrester reporting as requested, sir. The mission simulators show signs of tampering. Uh, explain your performance in the Kobayashi Maru scenario, Mr. Forrester. I reprogrammed the simulator, sir. Why did you cheat? Because I don't believe in the no-win scenario, sir. Cheating by reprogramming the simulator does not necessarily violate the letter of the law, but it does violate everything we've been trying to teach you. Uh, therefore, we have decided to take disciplinary action. With respect, sir, that's not what you did to Cadet Kirk. The Academy can take any disciplinary action, including expulsion. However, before we decide what to do with you, we must uh, resolve another problem.
Cadet Forrester, what would you be prepared to do to clear Styrick's name? I'd fly a garbage scow against the battle cruiser, sir. It won't take that much sacrifice. We're just going to put you on probation and let it be known that you're about to be expelled from the academy. What? David. David. We believe Zurich is innocent. But there is evidence to indicate that one of your crew members may have been involved in this incident. Cadet Brady is confirmed as being in the engineering library at the time his access codes were used. We doubt if he's the one who set the bomb. At ease, Cadet. To find out who, we'd like to have you undertake a covert mission for us. We'll explain that you're on probation. We'll tell the cadets that we found some vital clue as to the identity of the bomber, and um, that we're examining it in the science lab's compound analysis section. Then you get to complain about how unfairly the Academy has treated you. Hint that you're looking for a way to get back at us. A lot of the cadets know you've been working with me on the simulators and that you have access to the lab. Now keep in mind, cadet, that if you agree to assist us, you cannot talk to your team about this mission. So, what do you think? Are you ready to take on the challenge? Yes, sir. Congratulations, cadet. You are now officially on probation. Dismissed. It is over. I am being dismissed. I know it. I have failed the trial. Yet I do not see how it could have been honorably avoided. How will my father accept such dishonor from his firstborn son? How will I live with this failure? We are forced to divert a quarter of our forces because you chose to disobey your orders. Since you clearly have no sense of duty, perhaps you could better serve the Federation's Starfleet. Should I contact them and give them a sterling recommendation? Answer me! I do not accept blame for this, General. There was no honorable way to carry out your orders. This mission was rigged for failure. This mission was, in fact, a unique trial. It was designed to place your honor and duty in direct conflict to determine which you would sacrifice first. In battle, Torlek, a warrior's values fall into conflict more often than he would care to admit. We test you to prepare for the day you face such a conflict. Am I the only one tested like this? No, every academy student undergoes such a trial. When Colonel Pachtal was a student here, he also felt this trial was suspect. He was so enraged when I berated him that he drew his dagger and challenged me on the spot. I laughed in his face. <laughs> that stopped him cold. Then I am not dismissed from the academy? No one is dismissed for failing this trial. But had you not challenged the injustice of your situation, I would have let you believe you had failed. Either way, you would never forget the lesson. I have transferred you to the Ruptach Heavy Assault Fleet under Instructor Kamach. He has heard good things of you and is looking forward to your joining his command. That'll be all, Torek. It's not right. It's just not fair. We have to do something. David, one thing I've learned is that sometimes you have to bend the letter of the law to learn the spirit of the law. Exactly. What if the evidence against you were to disappear? No. I won't let the rest of you get expelled to try to help me. Well, 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 Forrester. Guess this makes you a civilian again. You're about a millisecond away from sudden death, Milan. We were just leaving. We don't want to break up your pity party. Look, you guys better get going. You have to prepare for your sim tonight, OK? Yeah. Hello, David. Faith. Can I sit? Sure, sit down. I heard about what the command staff did to you. They're completely unfair. I know. Look, David, I've got a problem, too. I visited Robin the day before the explosion, and I spotted a schematic for a homemade bomb. You think Robin planted the bomb? I don't know. 
But when I heard they found some new evidence, I was worried. I don't want to see anything happen to Robin. David, we got to break into that lab and see if they have any real evidence against him. Now, you know the lab's access code, and I know where to look for the evidence. Okay. Let's break into the lab. Good. Okay. Um, I'll meet you tonight after our nebula analysis seminar. Perfect. Okay, great. I'll see you then. See you, Faith. Can you get me into the computer? Sure. Looks like Robin used his access code the day of the break-in. They've got a picture of Robin entering the lab. What? What are you doing? I'm deleting it, and any other copies they might have. Wait, there's more. What is it? It looks like the remains of the bomber in locker D7. Could you go get it? Sure. There's nothing there! You were the bomber. Why, Faith? We never meant for it to go this far, but we couldn't let Strzok finish his project. We? You could still work with us, David. You could still join the Vanguard. I can't do that, Faith. I could kill you. No one would even know you were here. That's not gonna happen, Cadet. <laughs> Was it really worth it, Faith? You've ruined your career and your life. It's not about me. It's about survival. Survival of the Federation. Let her be. It's over. We'll take her now. But what if she's right? Cadet Forrester. David. It is about survival. But not like this. We finally got some good news. Stirk was officially cleared of all charges today. It turns out the bomber was Faith Gage. Corn and Robin are really shocked. Enter! At ease. Cadet Sturrock, you are officially cleared of any suspicion of sabotage. Cadet Forrester, the charges against you have been dropped, and you are reinstated in Starfleet Academy. Your cooperation has been invaluable and above the call of duty. You have the appreciation of the entire command staff. Thank you, sir. But I still don't understand all this. Sturek was studying ship fragments found on Baisia. He discovered that a complicated neural network was etched in the molecules of the fragments. I postulate that the fragments were part of a cybernetic life form, which I call the McClanty, after Joseph McClanty, 22nd century revolutionary in the field of cybernetics. The Klingons have nothing like it. But what does that mean? It means the ship is a life form. If Sturek had proved this theory, the Vanguard would have lost a powerful propaganda weapon. So Cadet Gage blew up the lab. Then the Vanguard took advantage of their own sabotage to cast doubt on the Federation. But what about Stark's investigation, sir? All the evidence was destroyed. The explosion cost us the only chance to find out who the attackers were. Captain Kirk is left for the Bicea system to see what can be discovered. Well, gentlemen, I think these cadets should go back to the business of being cadets. Dismissed. Aye, Aye sir. sir. Congratulations, David. Thank you. It's good to have you back. Thank you for standing by me, David. I know you did it at your own risk. Well, Mr. Sturk, I just didn't want you stuck in your quarters anymore. Actually, I found the confinement invigorating. I was able to devote more time to training. <laughs> Even being confined to quarters can make a Vulcan speak. A 
Academy instruction has been suspended for several days in observance of the Copa Ball Festival. I finally have time to see my father, and yet the general summons me in the middle of the celebration. Why the urgency and secrecy? Tolek, I have summoned you for a very special purpose. Before I continue, I must have your full support and pledge of silence. You have it completely, General. Good. I am certain you are familiar with the recent attempt to overthrow Chancellor Lorak and the rumors of the Chancellor's weakening health. Yes, General. I doubt there is any corner of the Empire where word of this has not spread. I can now confirm these rumors are true. I thought the threat posed by the House of Geoch had ended, but I was wrong. Kalnor left behind a half-brother named Melkor. My sources inform me this Melkor is building support for a second attempt to overthrow Lorak's regime. I have a time and place for a meeting between Melkor and the heads of four other houses. You see why I have summoned you? Yes, sir. I believe I do. I have acquired an experimental bird of prey that carries an extremely sensitive passive sensor array. It will allow you to eavesdrop on Melkor's meeting. Take command of this vessel. Warp while cloaked to the Krios system and locate Melkor's flagship. You must maneuver within 50 meters of his bridge and come to a full stop. At that range, you will be able to engage the sensor array and monitor the meeting. Before you depart, have you any questions regarding this mission? I am greatly honored to be chosen for this special assignment, General. Yet, why have you chosen me, a student, and not one of your seasoned commanders? My associates and I are being watched closely by allies of the House of Geoch. We cannot conduct this operation without attracting notice. And I am forced to turn to someone not directly linked to me. After examining your records, I have concluded you are the only one I can reasonably trust to succeed. I regret sending one of my students in what should be my place. But the situation demands it. The Empire will be ruined if the House of Geoch fulfills their honorless ambitions. What I ask of you has nothing to do with your studies here. Yet it is vital to the future of our Empire. I wish you good fortune, Tolak, son of Roar. Kapla! I have sworn to you. I and my house stand ready to support your claims. But we must know the exact nature of your plans before we declare ourselves publicly. I do not want you to declare yourselves publicly. At the proper time, I will reveal everything. Until then, you will wait patiently. Wait! Lorak is at his weakest now! The time to strike is now! I will ascend and take my rightful place as leader of the Klingon people. It is my destiny, but it will happen in a fashion of my own choosing. You may follow me and share in the glory to come, or not. The choice is yours. But if you will follow, you will obey. Despite! You fear the risks. I will waste no more words and count you amongst my enemies. Good, now leave. You may be directly out of these chambers. I will contact each of you in the weeks to come. No sooner have I returned from the Creos system than I find myself once more before the general. Torlek, congratulations on a mission well done. You have justified my confidence in you. Thank you, general. I have reviewed the coded report you sent. The data you acquired will prove vital in the days to come. It pleases me to inform you that you are being promoted. You will begin attending strike fleet briefings and report to Instructor Pokhtal, commander of the Sukhvat. You will be given command of a light cruiser. Before I dismiss you, do you have any questions? Sir, when do you anticipate Melkor will move against the Chancellor? Well, that is difficult to say. If he waits until Lorak dies, the High Council would waste no time naming a successor. Melkor must strike now while there is still uncertainty, not after. 
general, I mean no disrespect by this, sir, but I have often wondered why you quote the words of this Shakespeare, a human poet. This has caused me some confusion. Yes, I can see how that may seem perplexing. However, this is not such a mystery. Remember my first lesson to you? Know thy enemy. I have spent the latter half of my life studying human culture and their history. I encountered this Shakespeare early in these studies. He was one of their greatest warrior poets, eloquently writing about the same virtues that we strive for. Pity he was born to a people who cannot adequately appreciate the meaning of his work. He would have made such a fine Klingon. In any event, you have a new command to familiarize yourself with. Dismissed. Sturk, you're overworking yourself. Vulcans have excellent stamina. Look, it's not your fault that the proof was lost. If anything, it's mine. I should have gone back in there and pulled out your data. David, you would have been killed, just like I would have. Yeah, but now thousands of people are being killed in these random attacks. I could have taken action and stopped these massacres by now. Now our chances are slim. Don't be so sure of that. Sir! There was another attack along the Klingon neutral zone last week. I directed the search of the planet and found these. Fragments of the attacking vessel sheared off by the planetary defense system. A few of them show the molecular etching that Surik discovered. Starfleet scientists have fully examined these fragments and have concluded that the molecular etchings could not constitute the cybernetic neural network that I postulated. Now, I didn't agree. I wanted Stork to have another chance to prove his theory, so I persuaded Starfleet to turn the fragments over to him for the rest of the academic year. It will take a significant amount of work to establish whether my theory has any validity. Well, Mr. Forrester, you're his team leader. Stork doesn't need my permission to take on special projects. But I do need your assistance. Why? I need to simulate the remainder, and your experience with Commander Chekhov might make it possible to finish before graduation. What do you think, Captain Kirk? I'm not here to tell you how to spend your time, Cadet Forrester. I'm here to extend a command opportunity. It's up to you whether you take it or not. We have an unparalleled opportunity to study these fragments. No other lab in the Federation has state-of-the-art computer simulator equipment and the McClanty cybernetic remnants. I'd be glad to assist you. Good luck to both of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It is agreeable to have your assistance. I shall endeavor to explain my findings to date. I don't understand. We have different fragments from all over the McClanty vessel, but they all contain the same set of etched structures. That is not entirely correct. There are old pathways and new pathways in the metal, with some overwritten or blocked off. Though their appearance may seem the same, their actual function would be far different. But that's assuming something actually travels down these paths. They're too small. I mean, look, at best, only the most basic subatomic particles could travel down them. Though we may be on the wrong track, we should run a series of simulations to determine which subatomic particles do go down these paths. Look, this is not just random molecular crystallization. So we can simulate the rest of this matrix to figure out how it works. I don't know if I'm good enough to do that. I know you are. I guess we'll see. David! David! Robin, what's wrong? I went to one of the Vanguard's meetings. You what? Why did you do that? Faith Gage took me a ways back and you told me to get out with the other cadets. I didn't mean them. I know, I know, I won't go back, but David, I saw Magia there. Are you sure? She didn't see me, but it was her. She looked like she fit in real well with them. She's not even human and they accepted her. Why would the Vanguard accept an Endorian? The real question is, what do they want from her? Well, she was telling them how she thought the Klingons should pay for all the massacres along the neutral zone. And then having an Endorian, the daughter of her ambassador on their side, would give the Vanguard credibility. Yeah. Thanks for letting me know, Robin. No problem. But from now on, stay away from the Vanguard, okay? I will, I will. They wouldn't let me back in anyway. They use a telepath to determine who's a true Vanguard supporter. Once they looked into my mind, I could tell they were being very careful about what they said around me. All right, I'll handle it. Just don't go back there. I won't. Come on, we're late. I gotta get to the simulator. Cadet's log. I'm very disturbed by Robin's report that McGee is working with the Vanguard.
Enter. Bagia. David, you wanted to see me? Yes, I did. Magia, are you a member of the Vanguard? No. I know you've been to their meetings. I'm sorry. I lied to you, David. But I was trying to protect you. Protect me? How? Some of the Vanguard think you're okay because you seem to be friends with their hero, Kirk. But others like Milan would prefer to see you stuffed into a warp drive. Magia, sit down. Why did you join them? After Bicea, I went to the Vanguard meetings. They had all the answers that I wanted to hear. But then Faith framed Sturrock, and now the Federation and the Klingons are moving towards peace. The Vanguard is moving more and more towards violence. Why didn't you tell the Brass about this? Commander Sulu's policy is to wait until the Vanguard makes a mistake. He's waiting for the Vanguard to do something illegal before moving in. The biggest problem is I don't have any tangible proof. They're very tolerant when I'm around, but the core members of the Vanguard trust only humans. Well, then we'll have to get somebody human to infiltrate them. You're right. You can do it. You want me to join the Vanguard? Look, Magia, it wouldn't work. Even you said they hated me. The Vanguard knows you're working on something secret with Sturrock. You could pretend you discovered something that the Federation covered up. Something that turned you against the Federation. I don't think that would be enough. It has to be enough. It's the only way. Milan would never believe me. Fine. It's not going to work. Besides, they have a telepath. She'd spot whatever was planned in a heartbeat. Well, telepaths aren't always that reliable. But Vulcans are. Please, David. They believe Captain Kirk supports them. I think you're crazy. But, uh, okay, I'll give it a shot. Good. So I asked Dirk about ways to fool the Vanguard telepath. He told me Vulcans block telepathic probings by concentrating on intense experiences. It wasn't always effective. But it was better than no defense at all. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. What I didn't expect was for him to use the Vulcan mind meld to give me those experiences. Mind. I wasn't sure if I wanted to go through with this, but I'd give him McGee my word I'd infiltrate the Vanguard. Fascinating. Cadet's log supplemental. I still have to decide next week's schedule. Another secret meeting with the General. I can only hope the situation has not grown worse. Tolle, the information you acquired was very useful. But there are still many uncertainties regarding Melkor's plans. I have summoned you because there will be another meeting, this time in the Taharak system. As before, I will need you there to observe. Understand it is imperative we learn Melkor's plans and we are to stop him before he plunges the Empire into another wasteful war. Your transport leaves within the hour. Kapla. This has continued long enough, Melkor. You must reveal your plans to us now. There is no need for you to wail like a stuck quarreling. I'm now ready to reveal everything to you, including the additional support I've secured from outside the Empire. But first, there is a small matter to be taken care of. Doch, Mas. Have you detected any surges in neutrino emissions? Do so. During our last meeting, my previous science officer detected a strange surge in neutrino emissions. Research revealed there was a spy hovering close to this vessel, monitoring our meeting. The science officer discovered this far too late to catch the spy, but his replacement has performed his duties quite well. 
Would you not agree? I scarcely made it back. I can only guess how the general will receive my failure. Torlek, it pleases me that you've returned safely. General, I regret that I failed to retrieve the information you sought. Think of it no further. Neither one of us could have foreseen Melkor's knowledge of this operation, nor the trap he set. Still, it angers me that we must squander our resources, thwarting the ambition of fools, when our true enemy grows stronger by the day. In just a few hours, you will undertake your final Academy trial. For this mission, I have transferred you to my planetary assault fleet. Before I let you go, have you any questions? Forgive me, sir. But my understanding of the Federation is still not perfect. You have told us they are the true enemy, but why are they our greatest threat? The Federation represents the antithesis of everything we believe. Klingon values demand that the strong dominate. The Federation seeks to protect and nurture the weak. To us, honor is the principle by which we live and die. To them, it is a loosely formed idea to which they give lip service. Yet it is not their so-called values that make them our greatest threat. It is their institutionalized policies of subversion. Tell me, do you look forward to the day when the true meaning of being a warrior is forever lost? Of course not, General. The Federation does. They have successfully subverted the cultures of every society with whom they coexist. If we expose ourselves to their influence, they would corrupt us from within just as they have done all the others. Look, Forrester, McGee may buy your story, but I don't. Why do you really want to join the Vanguard? Captain Kirk convinced me. He discovered the Klingons were behind the attacks on Bicea. But the Federation Council threatened to strip him of command if he went public. And the mysterious alien ship? Stirk and I fabricated some evidence. You helped capture Faith Gage. That was personal. She nearly killed one of my crew. I'm picking up a memory from eight years ago. A Lieutenant Alan Forrester, his uncle, was killed by a Klingon bird of prey. The colony was later awarded to the Klingons, just like Bicea. His belief in our cause is quite strong. He certainly hides it well. I'm better at playing Starfleet's game than you are. Where do we go from here? We! <laughs> we do nothing. Devolution Day begins in less than one hour. Devolution Day? Magia, it will be the end of the Federation as we know it. How? Oh, you'll know when it's time. But when it's over, we'll be able to place Kirk in power as the ideal leader of the new Federation. Why wait? Kirk believes in your cause so much he might join. Are you serious? You know him that well? How long would you need? I can have Kirk here in a few hours. You have one hour. That's the deadline. You better be able to deliver, Forrester. Oh, I will. Stop the countdown. Why? We don't want to incinerate Kirk on his way over, do we? Go ahead. Use this to give Kirk your message. McGeer. It's been nearly an hour. Where's Kirk? Don't worry, he'll come. We've given him enough time. I told you, he'll be here. I'm not waiting any longer. Give me that. I'm restarting the countdown. I hear there's a group willing to take on the Klingons. Well, it's an honor, sir. Get to the point. What's your plan? We've set bombs in the offices of key Federation officials. Once they're gone, we're ready to step in to restore order immediately. Sir, you will be presiding over the new Federation. You better have planted those bombs well. Federation security is no joke. Let's see your layout. 
Incendiary bombs planted in public areas near Starfleet security. Planetary defenses and the Federation Council. Detonation in less than one hour. Very thorough, Mr. Malak. Thank you, Captain. You want to know what we're fighting for? The future! The galaxy is filled with murdering Klingons. No one has the courage to stop them. More unaligned worlds brutalized by Klingon forces. I say, enough! You are the new blood that will stand up to interstellar barbarians. Ever since the Organian Peace Treaty, the Federation has been a wolf with no fangs. Hostile aliens nip like dogs at our heels. And what do we do? Nothing. Every day of peace brings us closer to the end of the Federation. Forster's betraying us. Traitor, he's trying to blow out the timers. Mejia! Give me the phaser now. Put it down slowly. Slowly. Back up against the wall. Alien dies first. Stop. Oh, please, don't tell me you're a traitor, too. Forrester lied to you. But he betrayed me first, if you want me to be your new leader. His punishment is my call, not yours. Yes. Yes, Captain. Aye, sir. This isn't set to kill. It isn't? No. It's set on wide-angle stun. Ah. Uh -uh. Kirk security. Need a security detail beam to this location. Nice work in disarming those bombs. Now, I don't know about you, but I could use a drink. Have you ever tried sawing brandy? My communications officer turned out to be a true hero today. As she predicted, the Vanguard did do something violent. But she intervened in time, saving over a hundred people from being killed. They're even talking about giving Magia a medal. And she should be back on active duty as soon as they finish repairing the phaser burns on her back. Good thing she ducked. This will be my last address. It marks the end of the Academy's term and your graduating mission. Whether you fail or succeed in this last trial, I again urge you to remember, you are all Klingons. You carry a legacy in your blood that lends strength to your deeds, strikes terror in the hearts of your enemies. The hope of every Klingon is to die in the service of the Empire. There is no dishonor in falling before a superior foe. If your heart is pure, your actions forthright, what you have been taught will serve you throughout all your battles to come, till one day you earn an honorable and glorious death. Cadet's log. Well, looks like I'm still in the Academy. There were times I thought I'd blown it, but and now I think I've made the right choices after all. Speaking of choices, I spent a lot more time on the simulation than on my class studies. I might not graduate first in my class, but I just felt that Sturk and I were too close to an answer to give up. All known sentient creatures are neurologically wired to use language. But the McClanty appear to have no language in any conventional sense. But we get a clear response when we mimic its actions. True, but irrelevant. 
But you said there were old pathways and new pathways. Why would that be unless it were changing? Or maybe, well, let's try this. How's it? Oh my God. We did it. We did it, Strike. Enter. Now, gentlemen, please explain your findings. Earlier, we concluded that the McClanty are not conventionally sentient and cannot comprehend a spoken language. However, we have now determined that they can learn. We can't make the McClanty follow human thinking, so we have to try to follow their thinking. By mimicking the McClanty ship's every move, a Federation ship can establish a rapport. Hmm. Intriguing ideas, but I find it impossible to think that any crew would attempt to try such a radical theory. So don't feel too badly if it's never actually tested in the field. Uh, still, you do deserve some sort of commendation for such a unique graduation thesis. Uh, dismissed, cadets. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And with that, the door closed on a year's work. Time for the final mission before graduation. What a truly glorious day this is. This marks the fulfillment of my most cherished dream. I have delivered a great honor to my family name, and I have justified my father's faith in me. From this day forth, I will proudly bear the mark of this school and its teachings. After the ceremony, the other students received their assigned commands. At first, there seemed to be a mistake, for mine was withheld. Then I received private word from the general, instructing me to meet him in the graduation hall that evening. Tolek, it is good that you came. General, I am puzzled by these circumstances. You mean the late hour of this meeting, and the fact that you have not received your assigned command? You will understand, once our guest arrives. Wait, here he is now. Chang. I requested we meet in private. Torlek has been instrumental in our efforts to thwart Melko. He has proven himself worthy. Very well, then. I'm here to inform you Chancellor Lorak died not three hours past. And Melko? This whelp is not seeking the chancellorship as we had presumed. He publicly declared himself emperor of the Klingon people no more than an hour ago. This is preposterous. There has not been a functioning emperor since the time of Kroch the Weak. A fool's brother had more sense. Not so. This is a very unusual yet calculated move. Melkor is leveraging his family's influence with outrageous promises of glory. It is certain I will be named Lorak's successor. I will need you to gather your fleet. No! What? I cannot support you in this, Gorgon. Are you mad? Have you also fallen under this Melkor spell? Do not insult me if you have any doubts as to my feelings for Melkor. Ask his dead brother. They'll be reasonable. I have never been otherwise. Gorkon, we've been friends for a long time now. We both know that if you become Chancellor, you will seek a peace with the Federation. I cannot abide this. I will fight the House of Geok, but I cannot in good conscience support you. Your conscience did not prevent you from killing Melkor's brother. When I killed Kalnor, Lorak was still very much alive. You say this knowing the threat Melkor poses. <laughs> Better that fate than a future where we become Federation slaves. And this is your final answer? It is. So be it then. You were always a stubborn fool, Chang, but this time your hatred will cost us everything. Uh, 
as of today, we are at war. Cadet's log. Finally, it's graduation day. Mom and Dad arrived this morning, and commencement was a blast. And it is my honor and privilege to award Cadet David Ross Forrester with the Commandant's Award of Meritorious Service and the Starfleet Call of Duty Award. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander Forrester. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. Thank you, sir. You've done brilliantly, Lieutenant. I must say I'm impressed. I've never seen a whole team of cadets turn down their postings to continue serving with their training captain. Congratulations, David. You've drawn a full bridge crew for your mission. My mission, sir? We're giving you a chance to test your McClanty theory in the field. You'll patrol the neutral zone for two weeks looking for the McClanty. And you have a field promotion to captain. Thank you, sir. Well, captain Kirk thought that uh, your McClanty simulation deserved more than just a commencement award. She's been in dry dock for six weeks and she needs someone to put her through her paces. The Enterprise? I, I don't know what to say, sir. And just have her back by midnight and don't scratch the paint. <laughs> Captain, the Enterprise is hailing us. We have permission to come aboard. Dirk, right over here. Ensign's Karn and Acton. What the hell? Ensign McGee? Communications? Aye, sir. Mr. Brady? Engineering's right over there. Thank you, sir. I can't believe this. I've been studying this all my life. We've heard that before. Mr. Forrester. The command chair. Aye, sir. Go on, Captain. Take her out. Helmsman, impulse power. <laughs> 